Hey guys, my name is Jennifer and I am Genevieve Designs. Today we are going to do some matting and inserts for our triple flip pocket page that we have, that we did in the very last video where we, where we constructed this super easy. It's a lot easier than you guys thought, I bet, to make this triple little flip page. But this video is in the playlist for this album and I will have that playlist linked up here in the cards and down below in the description box. So this is the Simply Magical portrait version that we are working on currently. And I was just using this as a, and I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. <laughs> so that's why that was there. This one is called Meal, uh, Meal, Meal, Meal. This is the paper collection that we are using and the settings that I've changed for whatever reason, it just gets weird when I get up really close, right? It gets blown out or whatever. So I'm gonna try to see if I can just get it to focus because it doesn't look right on my screen, but I'm trying. So I'm trying to make it better each time. I've tweaked one more thing this time. We'll see. But anyway, this is the paper collection that I'm using. I have a special Amazon list for this. I have everything linked down below in the description box. And all that jazz. So that's what this album is called. And this is where we're at so far. We've got one little page set up in our little hybrid uh, elastic accordion binding. And uh, we also have the fabric spine. All of these things are in that playlist that I have linked. And this is what we did last. So let me show you what I think we're gonna do because I haven't planned this entire thing out yet. So I just thought, just go ahead and do what you what you've already got prepped, and then you'll you'll you can go from there. So this was the leftover piece from printing off the pockets for this triple flip, and. I took, I took and printed page P37, which is the mats for this page. I think I cut it off like this. This was the, this was the 12 by 12 here. Oops. This was the 12 by 12. So I took uh, and cut it down to eight and a half. So this is eight and a half. And then there's my large cutoff piece. And then I trimmed it down to 11. So I trimmed this bottom part off. If you don't use a US letter size paper, you trim your paper down to your paper, your printer, whatever your printer prints. And when you print your template onto that paper, just make sure that you uh, unclick fit to page or whatever it is so that it prints properly. Okay, so, so anyway, so I printed page P37 directly onto this patterned paper. And I did this very, uh, intentionally because I wanted to show you why this page is set up the way it is and uh, I think you guys will a appreciate it and B think it's like cool <laughs> and it's less mess less waste so I'm gonna move this out of the way I need to make myself a oh is it getting ready to rain oh no I've been outside in my garden in my yard so much this weekend. It's Monday, today's Monday. And wow, I was, I've was i been having the best time in my yard. You, you guys keep asking me for a tour of my yard, my backyard. I think I might do that for you guys. Um, I think I might, I think I'll be brave and show you my gardens, my landscaping, my cottage garden feel situations. We've got two different separate spaces. We, we call them our dueling gardens, but they're really not. We're, it's just fun to do it two different ways. Plus, we both enjoy being out in our, in our gardens. So I'm thinking about doing that for you guys. I think I'm gonna do that. Uh, but we also spent some time, uh, we have a motorcycle. We went on a couple motorcycle rides this weekend. So that was a lot of fun. We just, we just have been having a really, really good time. <laughs> I need to make myself a, but the whole reason I started talking about all that is I fertilized my garden with some granular fertilizer today. And I was hoping it's gonna rain and it hasn't started raining yet, but but maybe soon, maybe soon. <laughs> I try to fertilize right before it's gonna rain so that it can naturally just disperse into the garden. 
Okay, but I need to make myself, I need to get myself a scrapper keeper sheet for this project. Oh, is this one? This is what our scrapper keepers look like. And if you guys have been with me for a very long time, you know exactly what this is. But if not, I will link the video. I don't know if it was a video or if it was a playlist, but I will find it and I will put it up here in the cards and down below in the description box. But it's basically these large project sleeves oop, that we house all of our cut off leftover bits from cutting our papers down when we run them through the printer. So I've got some really old ones in here, some really old collections, oh my gosh. Some favorites. Oh, this one right here from Blue Fern Studio. I don't remember what it was called, but I loved it so much. Okay, so anyway, this is my scrapper keeper. I made one for my mom. I think this one actually might be the one I made for my mom. Uh, the other one, or was this one the one I made for my mom? This is the other scrapper. Uh, this one might be the one I made for my mom. This might be the original, and this one might be the one I made for my mom. Yeah, this one's more recent, I think. It's got more recent paper, oh, more recent paper collections. Oh, this I love. This one's one of my favorites. We use this at a Oh, Okay, all right. Anyways, so I will find it and link it. I love these. Okay. All right, I've, I've rambled on. So what we do is we put our large cutoff pieces. There are some templates that are designed to be matted with these large cutoff pieces. And some templates are designed to be matted with the small cutoff pieces, like the belly bands and things like that. So I like to keep them separate so that I know these are the ones that I can use for those things. Sorry about the glare, for those things. So I've got myself a, a plastic sleeve going for that. First thing I wanna do is I wanna coffee stain this part so it has time to dry. I got, well, I didn't buy it, I already had it. This is a distress sprayer from Tim Holtz. Remember I had the big bottle that I was using? I also got one of these. I used to use these um, a lot when I was making my own distress inks and my sprays and my own alcohol, alcohol inks. India ink sprays. Um, I think I just got these little bottles like at Hobby Lobby or something because it comes in like a pack of two. So I did finally get down to a smaller, but I wanted to show you. I want to demonstrate. Let me get a scrap piece. Sorry, I got my back to you. This is a scrap piece of paper. I wanted to show you the difference in the sprayers because you know the distress sprayer, you can barely hold it down and it'll like do droplets, right? Or you can squeeze it and it disperses out. This sprayer, you can't, this is just coffee, by the way. This sprayer, it just squeezes out. There is, I mean, you can try to get it to, to drip, dribble, but it really doesn't. So, FYI. So that's a good use for this sprayer, is to put your leftover coffee in here and then you can you can hit it hard or you can do little dribble dribble dribbles which is what I kind of liked about that other sprayer someone uh, Connie thank you Connie I don't I haven't tried it yet but Connie said that she heard you could put alcohol like uh, rubbing alcohol or something in these bottles so that the coffee lasts longer inside the bottle so something to think about I haven't tried it if anybody has uh, leave me a comment down below let me know your thoughts Okay, so I think I want to coffee stain. I might, I might. No, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna coffee stain. I can always come back and add. Oh, do y'all hear it? Y'all probably can't hear it. I can always come back and add, like if I wanted to add speckled egg or Victorian velvet, I can always do that later. We can also, we can, no, I don't think I want to do that either. I was going to say, we can also run these through die cutting, the die cut embossing powder situation, but I don't want to do that yet either, because this, I'm just getting them ready, basically. Okay, 
I'm not even sure we're going to use that. Well, here, let's, well, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I'm not even sure if we're going to use these today in this video. And this was printed on an inkjet, so the ink is going to run. So I'm doing some dribbles, and now I'm just kind of saturating it a little bit more. Right? And I think what I'm going to do, because I need to do some trimming, I'm just going to scoot this aside and wipe my table up here. And I am going to trim these out. So first I'm just going to, well, let's use my paper trimmer. I'm just going to trim these two away from... Um, from these and I'm going to cut these out and I will be right back okay I had to dry this a little bit more I got these two cut out I dry this a little bit more and then I added a little bit more a little bitty more a little bit more of uh, coffee stain or um, coffee drippings and I'm gonna cut these out again I don't know if we're gonna use these in this video <laughs> but I wanted to go ahead and start on them just in case we'll have we'll just have some more pre-made ephemera for whenever we need a couple tags if we don't use them in today's video These are very raggedy looking, torn, worn um, tags, and I intentionally did it that way. I just thought they'd be fun, different, you know? Okay, so before I ink anything, I kind of wanted to show you the way these uh, mats are designed. Oops. They're designed to mat the back side of this. So they're designed to match up the top part, right? And then this corner here, if you wanted to either bend it up, roll it up, or um, give it a, whoop, where'd that little piece go? Um, give it a little bit of an edge. There, it's designed to kind of match up to that. See how everything just kind of matches up? All right, so you can do it like this. So that's the back side of the tag. Or this one, for example, there it is. I thought I might, instead of using this side, I might flip it over this way and use that side, right? So what I would do is, I would think, I would, I think I'm gonna punch a hole here. Just with a hole punch. I'm just going to punch that center hole out. I'm not going to put. Um, I'm not going to put a hole reinforcement on it. Just. Oh. Okay. Hold on. I got to go. I am. What's it called? Before it rained, I have planted some strawberry blonde. Let me see if I can find. Oh me and my hubby on a motorcycle aren't we cute <laughs> okay um I have planted I need to remember how to pronounce it I took pictures of them here calendula calendula calendia caladia 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 anyway there. Look at how beautiful. So since it was going to rain, I decided to clip a bunch of them and dehydrate them. So I need to go check my dehydrator real quick. That's what that Laura, isn't that pretty? Let me Google it again. <laughs> Pronounce. Calendula. Calendula. 
calendula. All right, I'm gonna go check it really quick. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, not ready yet. They, that's, that was two hours so far. Does anybody know how long it takes to dehydrate? It's like on 95 degrees and they were the whole buds. I did wash them, let them soak in some water to get any bugs and stuff out of them. Um, and then let them dry on a towel for a second and then put them in the dehydrator. Does anybody know how long that might take? So now I can just line up the whole reinforcement hole that's supposed to be there. I can just line those up and I can mat it this way. So I'm gonna do that. Cause you can see I already inked the side up a little bit. I'm gonna do that and then I will mat that one the other way. I'm just using some Fabri-Tac by Beacon. Oop. Went through the hole. So these will be ready for use at some point. So, I need to, what do I have back? I need a block. Where's my, I don't think this is big enough. dry and then this one I'm just gonna match up well maybe I should go ahead and poke a hole so I'm just, this is a crocodile and it's the perfect size for that and so let me do this one too This one will be on the back side, so it should match up just like that. Perfect. Right? Same thing. I'm going to use my fabric tuck. Way too much. That's okay. Going to ink the back side of this, even though I'm not really going to make it a tag just yet. All right, so I did just want to, I guess I could pinch the hole in it really quick just so I know that it's a tag when I'm looking at it quickly or something okay so now I've got these two ready I'm kind of enjoying having some things already pre-made like this so this is this has been fun so those two are done so now let me show you these the mats for these so we're going to do this. I set this up very specifically because I want you to see, I think this will work anyways. I think I picked the right, we'll see. If not, then, then it won't be great. So I'm going to cut this part away, this bottom part. I'm going to flip it around. Cut this top part away. And then I'm going to separate each one, leaving this piece attached. And I'm going to keep, oh, I should have marked one, two, three. One, two, three. Just because, just in case. Okay. Just in case I got a little wonky with my scissors or my paper trimmer. Okay, so let's start with three. Oh, I didn't, I didn't trim that very well. Let's see, will it still fit on there? Yep. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut this part. I 
Okay, so this is meant to mat here, right? But then you can take this piece and slide it under like this if you want it to, or you could flip it over and I think, will it be enough? Yeah, you can flip it over. I'm gonna have to straighten that edge out and use this. The other option is to use this back side but it would be upside down. So, right? Yeah, it would be upside down if we tried to. So we're not doing that. But yeah, so this is why I left, why I have it like this, so that you can flip this over and use it as a mat for the inside of your base. So let's go ahead and do the rest. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to straighten these up with my paper trimmer. I think, maybe not. Maybe I'll use my ruler. So I'm just going to go from point to point and straighten them up or just give them a straight edge. So then I think it will fit in here. Perfect. Yes. So that's what I'm going to do. And I better mark these. Three, two, one. Just so that there's a flow, you know? All right. I'm going to do that to these two and then I'm going to ink everything up and okay so I've got them I'm going to open this up I've got them all inked up and ready to attach Oop. my fiber tack is bubbling over So let's just go ahead and attach it down. I'm just going to use the fabric tack because it's out. And plus, I want to use the fabric tack on the pieces I have to slide in because they, that way I got a little bit of wiggle room. So I'm anticipating decorating these more, which is why I printed, I used this side to, for to, um, to mat instead of the other way around. Um, you know, with the pretty foil and stuff. I, I plan on coming back and, and adding more, more pretty stuff to this. Maybe, maybe not in this video, but um, eventually come back and add, make it a little bit more fancy, a little bit more decorated, a little bit more finished. Okay. All right. I think that looks good. So I'm going to let that dry, but I have already printed off what we're going to mat the backs of these with. So, let me show you. This is a printed page P36, which is the mats to the back of the main base uh, flip. And I cut it down like this. This was the 12 by 12 piece. Right, so I cut eight and a half so here's my large cutoff piece and then the bottom uh, I cut it to 11 so 
Again, I'm going to go ahead right now and stick these in here. And I'm going to cut these out, ink them up. I think I will do one, two, three again, just so they are in the right order and I don't have to think about it. I don't have to try to match it up. So I'm going to cut these out and I'm going to ink them up and then we will attach them to the back. All right, I got them cut out and then I decided I needed to add some bling to them. Look how pretty. They're not attached yet, but look how pretty. So I left one more. I got them cut out and I got them inked up. And I'm just using a glue stick and the foil. The foil is the Sussex foil. I have that linked in my special Amazon list for this project. And I'm using the Goad. You could use the mink foil as well, the mink machine foil. I did that before this product came out, before this, this foil did. So it can be done. I would just advise you to try it with whatever foil. Probably be the best idea. Because some people say that the, the mink foil always worked well for me, but some people say it never would work for them. So it just like, maybe it depends on the weather. I don't think it depends on the glue, but it could. I don't know. I just, this is the glue stick that I happen to have a lot of. So I just use it. So you just, you just kind of ink the edges of your, of your item with your glue stick. That's the way I like to, to look at it. And then you press the foil down over top of it and it gives it this really cool distressed foiling. So, and I happen to like it a lot. The distressed foiling. And you can see I've used this, whoops, I completely put it on a blank area, but you can still get foil to come off. You can see I've used this foil over and over. Can you see? I'm trying to get the glare. Look at all that. And I'm going to continue to use it until it just will not put any foil down at all. Okay, come on. I can't tell what you guys can see. Can you see it? Can you see it better down here? Look at that. Look at how pretty. Okay. So that's going to be the one that goes there. Now, I'd, since I'd inked it prior to, now my glue has uh, a bunch of, like, distressed ink on it. But that's okay. No big deal. All right. So I've got them marked one, two, three, and I'm going to glue them down. I'm use my fabric tuck. I used this page because I thought it would be a good place for some writing, some journaling. We might come back and add some more embellishing on it. Just like with any page. You know it still hasn't, it sprinkled just a teeny tiny, teeny tiny bit. And now all that did was make it super humid outside. So yay, that, that's fun. So I'm gonna have to. Work. I, ha I had started some. I had started some seeds. Late. I know they're late, but I wanted to get some holy basil in my garden, and uh, I've already got chamomile. But I wanted to plant some more chamomile. What else did I plant? Oh, uh, some chunks of ginger that were in my refrigerator. I'm just ex am experimenting with that to see if I can get it to do anything. Um, it's just kind of fun. But anyway, so I'm going to have to water them if it doesn't rain. It's supposed to rain for like the rest of the day, but it hasn't. Just a little sprinkle enough to make it humid. So, that's perfect. Perfect. Okay. So now, we've got the backs of those matted. So when you flip them over, boop. That is so pretty, don't you think? I don't know what I'm going to do here yet, but I did print off the tags that are going to go in here. And I would already prepped it because it takes forever to dry. So this one is page P20. So this 
so I cut it down, I cut it apart, so we're going to use these top three, you can use whatever you want, I'm going to use these top three tags. Now in the enhancement pack, there are ones that have these cool corners on them. You could use those as well if you would prefer. I've got a skeeter bite right there from this morning. It's very aggravating. Um, and this is just on 80 pound white cardstock and I've already just sprayed them a little bit with coffee and I don't think I'm going to mat them. I think I'm just going to leave them as is. Well, I'm going to cut them apart. I already wrote P20 on here so I didn't get confused <laughs> what page that was on because that happens. I still have to look, you guys, it's just because I designed them and made them and, and did all of that work to get them to the where they are for you guys today doesn't mean I remember every single little thing because I can't. I can't. My brain just can't hold that much <laughs> information. All right, I'm going to trim these three apart. And I'm going to ink them up on both sides. Oops. Right? I'll do one with you and then um, I'll do the rest off camera. So I'm going to ink them up on both sides. Whoa. So it's going to go in here. So now I need to decide what what hole reinforcement I'm going to use. What have I used so far? Have I used many, very, very many? I've used the pink and foil, the foiled pink hole reinforcements. I used the walnut stain hole reinforcement, and that's it. Okay. With the foil. So let's do the green. We made these in a video. A specific video so we'll do the green and uh, that's in the playlist for this album so if you'll notice I don't know if how well you're gonna be able to see see how some of them are lifting up a little bit well you know what if that happens you guys because uh, obviously mine are you can take your glue stick I think it's just because it's coming off of the plastic but on the paper it doesn't seem to have very much trouble Take your glue stick or you can take some liquid glue and you can just add some dots and that away your hole reinforcement won't come up. Right? So you do that. This is just art glitter glue. And then Give it a little pressure, then you want to cut, a cut. You want to punch the hole. And I think we'll do the same color on the back side. Let's do this one that wants to jump up off that page there. Just going to put some dots. Me. I wonder if I could put some pressure on here. Let's put it in between my blocks. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and do these two and put the whole reinforcements on there and I'll be right back. Okay guys, I... <laughs> I'm going to scoot you in so you can see what I'm doing here. I got the two of them. That might be too far. I got... Two of the tags completely done. I put some string on them, and then I also added some charms. So you remember these charms, metal charms, that are part of the collection. And there's a pink, a yellow, and then just a butterfly. But the color of the metal doesn't quite match the aesthetic of what I've got going on. So I changed these to to match a little bit better. So what I did, which I didn't even need to use the paintbrush, but I ended up using a paintbrush. I'm using the Adirondack uh, Mix Mixative in Gold. That is the one that I'm 
using, right? And I just put some out. I could have just used my dauber. I don't know. I guess I thought this would be better uh, to get in the creases and stuff. But I just, even over that uh, enamel and everything, I just went over top of it. It doesn't even have to be perfect. But make sure you get the back because you'll see the back. Just to make it look a little bit more rusty, a little bit more old, you know. So now I'm going to dry that real quick and then let me show you. If you don't have one of these like garment pins, I will show you another way that you could do it too. Okay, so now you can see the difference between the two. Even though it's still pretty like that, um, I just like the little bit more of a vintage look myself. So I'm going to take this off. And it's got like a little loop, ouch, hot. It's got like a little loop, like, you know, like for, for jewelry and whatnot. Let me move these. Put back in the packaging. So it's got like a little loop, so you can either put it through here, or you can take a... I'm going to use the, the garment pin, but you can also take a paper clip and the small ones, these little small ones, and run, whoops, run the little part of the paper clip through that whole reinforcement hole, and you can dangle it from the end of that. Just like that. You can also do that if you don't have the garment pins that look like that. Okay, you can also just tie it on to one of these strings here. One of the, let me remove this. Or if you have a, a big enough jump ring, you could use a jump ring. Use what you have. Okay, first thing is I'm gonna take my two, this is that gold baker's trine, gold and white baker's trine, and then the black. And I just kind of pull a little bit out together, string it through. This just takes uh, something very plain and turns it into something pretty, pretty fantastic. Alright, and I just do a little knot. Alright, and then I'm going to try to since they're all going to be right here together, I'm going to try to make them the same length. Okay, so now I'm going to take this garment pin. This one I had rusted a long, long time ago. Probably right around Metacon time. That's been years, you guys. That's been years. If any of you guys were took a Metacon class, give me a thumbs up. Say hello. It's been a long time, hasn't it? Okay, so now I'm going to try to get this to, to shift where the bulby part is. On the outside. Well, come on. How did I get it to do it? Something isn't working here. I guess I could just take it off. And come at it from this direction. <laughs> Probably be easier. There we go. So now we've got we've got a bee, a butterfly, and a bee. Isn't that cute? And then they flip. So uh love it. I love it. 
I think that looks really, really good. Let me back out. Oop, wrong way. And of course, if you don't have the charms, it's okay. It's totally fine. Just, just use some Baker's Twine or just bling it up however you want. But I love that. All right, you guys, I think that's all we're going to do today. Um, do leave me a comment and let me know what you think. Oh, I didn't even need that. Let me know what you think. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Let me know how you're enjoying this project. And don't forget to check all of the information down in the description box. And don't forget to be subscribed to my channel. And thank you guys so much for joining me today. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.